Welcome to today's Healthy Marriage. I'm your host, Charlene Lammers, Executive Director for Great Marriages for Sheboygan County. Today our guests are Tom and Sue Rice. They are certified and trained marriage mentors for great marriages. Hi and welcome, Tom and Sue. Hi, how Hi. are you? Nice to be here. Great. So, just to start off, how long have you two been married? Uh, we'll be married 45 years in June. So you're newlyweds. <laughs> yeah. How, how did you find out about great marriages? One of our pastors invited us to a meeting to do some training, and it was at Great Marriages. And as we went through the training, you know, Sue and I had been looking for some kind of a ministry that we could get involved in after I retired. And it just seemed that this is something we feel very passionate about, and that is preserving marriages. And so, and especially with the Christian emphasis of good, great marriages, we felt it was a match, and um, that's how we got into it. I think before that even, we'd seen the great posters all over and wondered what great marriages was. Yeah, that's probably how we're known best is mm -hmm. for our billboards. Everybody notices mm -hmm. those. So that was the t first time that you were introduced to great marriages. Mm -hmm. They invited you to come to the training. Right. Okay. So what, what positive things had you heard about you know, the organization that even made you want to come to the training? You said that uh, your success rate was very high. Mm -hmm and also that um, a very large percentage was faith-based. Right, probably 80% okay. of our programming, up to 80% mm -hmm. is faith-based. We also offer, offer secular programming for those who do not want any faith-based. Mm -hmm. They can also come and, and get help, obviously, for their marriages. So what made you start to think about possibly being marriage mentors? I mean, you know you were coming for the training, but you had to have considered, what does that mean to be a marriage mentor? Can I do it? You know, what made you want to think about, what made you think positively about it? God's Word talks about the older teaching the younger. And um, we feel passionately about the fact that we want to share our experience in, you know, the things that we've gone through in our marriage with younger couples who may be struggling or may just have questions or want to know some of the tricks of raising children or how do I get along with my spouse and what do you do in these situations. Uh, there were older people that mentored us mm -hmm. as we were going through our younger years with our kids and our marriage and that was so valuable to us because you know we found out that we weren't the only ones in that boat and that the struggles we were having everybody else was having at the same time so uh, and and the fact that it's based upon God's Word and based in Scripture uh, I think is, is critical because without God our marriage would never have lasted 44 years <laughs> I, I think the thing that it really attracted me or convinced me while we were doing the training and after were the great skills that were offered to teach the, the people that we're mentoring. And I, th I thought that was really, we're not marriage counselors, no. but uh, those skills uh, were something we thought we could see how practical they were. You know, we're always emphasizing the fact that at great marriages, we're not counselors, we're not therapists, mm -hmm. we're mentors and educators, right, who are trained right. in the programs. So basically what we're doing is we're offering the skills in communication and conflict resolution mm -hmm. that can be used with coworkers, yes. friends, family members, children, anybody. The skills are pretty basic. We just mm -hmm. apply them to marriage, and I think that's why we have su such a successful rate of success, because we teach those skills that can be utilized anywhere. The training that you went through, can you talk a little bit about what you learned or what you felt that day as you were being trained? It's a pretty intensive day of training. I think as we walked out of there, we realized it was only a beginning and it touched the surface. Um, as we spent time with couples mentoring them, we, we've gone on to relook at all of those videos again to to apply the things that are in the videos to the couples that we've, we've already been mentoring with. 
Um, in addition to that, the skills make sense. They're logically, they follow a form and a format, and one builds upon the other. And I think that's the important part of what we're seeing. Um, when we talk to couples, you know, when you're talking about communication, that's the foundation. And then you build upon that foundation, but you got to get the foundation right first. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you practice with them and those kinds of things. You know, you talked about how when you, you've been married 44 years, and, and you've admitted it's not perfect every day. Marriage is sometimes hard. It's hard work. It's a hard job, right? Mm -hmm. We teach there are seven stages of marriage. Not all are great. Mm -hmm. I can promise every married couple that they will go through some of the tough times, mm -hmm. right? So how do we get through those tough times? We use the marriage mentoring or examples. Some people don't have examples or role models in their life of a healthy marriage. Yes you know, of a long-term marriage. You said that you utilized people throughout your 44 mm -hmm. years to help you when you were having sure. tough times. Can you speak to some of what those tough times may have been or how you utilized others as marriage mentors, even though they weren't in a program such as we're speaking about today? Mm -hmm. It's still a form of marriage mentoring, turning to someone who has made it, who is doing it. Sure. To begin with, even uh, when our children were young and... Uh, We'd have difficult days, <laughs> um, but we, we met with just a, a small group of um, people that were all ages, and when we started, you know, somebody would say, boy, I had a really rough day, and uh, just talk about a problem with one of the kids, and somebody else would say, you know, I've had that problem, and this worked really well, or somebody else would pipe in and say, you know, try this, that might work, or uh, it's, it's just a good way to exchange that information. Also, uh, some of the older ones that we liked the way we saw them raising their children. And so we very much um, wanted to follow after their pattern. It gave us a, it, it gave a forum to ask questions in a pretty non-threatening environment. Mm -hmm. And people shared, you know, some of the, the things that they did. Um, you know, in disciplining our kids. Is it always spanking? No, you know, it's, it's other things. It's finding the, the thing that that child may dislike the most and using that as a form of punishment or correction. It's setting rules and setting boundaries for the kids. And, and we learned those kinds of things as we were raising children. As far as our marriage is concerned, uh, it was talking to one another. It's being absolutely honest. It's it's those kinds of things that these people would share with us through their examples and through, you know, just going back into God's Word and talking about what does it say about a relationship between a man and a woman. So uh, all of that was kind of the potpourri that got us to where we are today. So you're kind of talking about perhaps some of the challenging times that you faced. And one is during those child rearing years when the children are, are mm -hmm. little, probably between five and ten years of marriage, a lot of people struggle. The next time would be when the kids are getting ready to leave the house. You know, if you've not made your marriage a priority and everything's revolved around the children, that can be difficult for some couples. Can you talk about what that was like for you and did you use other couples as mentors during that time in your life? We'd heard that since our kids were little. Mm -hmm. um, we'd been cautioned to build into our marriage times for each other and uh, not to lose that that love for each other. And I think um, for us, we had done enough of that. And our kids left one at a time, not all at once. <laughs> so that um, it's been pretty smooth going, I'd say, <laughs> so far. <laughs> Her daughter said to us one day, she said, how long did it take you to adjust to the empty nest syndrome? And we said about three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I think part of that's because we just love being together, love spending time together. and. Um, you know, we have a lot of interests in the common, we have a lot of separate interests. And uh, it, it just gives you a chance to remember why you married that person and to enjoy how, they've, how we've grown together. So the friendship just deepens and gets better. One of the things we do at Great Marriages, you know, by providing the mentors is helping young couples especially who may not come from a home where mom and dad are still together. They may be married mm -hmm. to somebody else or not married at all you know, trying to show them a role model that, yes, you can definitely have a lifetime, happy, mm -hmm. loving marriage. You may be married 50 years, and maybe 
five or six were not so good. You had some hard times when you're in the middle of the five or six hard years. It seems like forever and you just want it to end. Um, but if you're married, if you stick with it and you're married 50 years, you look back and you say it was only five years. You know, I had 45 good years. It was mm -hmm. worth it. How do you help couples when you're mentoring to give them that perspective? You know, that, yeah, it is hard right now and you're fighting a lot and you're not liking each other and maybe you think you're not in love anymore. But how can you show them the hope that there's better things yet to come? I think one of the things that we're experiencing is that a lot of couples don't have a lot of time to spend with each other. Mm -hmm. They're both working, they may be working different shifts and those kinds of things. Um, but I think the key to, do, to, to your personal relationship between you and your wife or your husband is to spend time together. You, you have to be intentional in carving out time. We did, you know, and whether it was taking it one night a week for a Bible study or a small group meeting or uh, one night a week to go out for dinner or what have you, as the kids were growing up, we mm -hmm. made those times where we spent time just together. And I think that was what tended to make our friendship grow and our love grow between us. You know, and then there were times when we were together as a family. But if you don't have those special times between you and your spouse, you know, you're going to get to the point where you just drift apart because just of the busyness of schedules mm -hmm. and family matters and everything else. It doesn't even have to be a night out or spending, spending money, but I, I got into the habit early on of when Tom came home from work, um, when he went back to the, the bedroom to change clothes, I'd go with him and I'd just sit and talk to him while he changed. And we kind of caught each other up on our days and uh, what was happening, and we found that that, even sometimes that was only five, ten minutes, mm -hmm. but it was five or ten minutes and the, uh, before he dived into what was going on with the family and I had to go back and fix dinner, but it was just um, a good time to connect, to stay connected. Well, our mentoring program shows that if couples spend as little as three to seven minutes mm -hmm. a day, talking about their relationship and, and what they can do to make it better or what you know they're having problems with that they'd like to work on, that can mm -hmm. make a marriage better. As little as three to seven three minutes, to seven people minutes. come in and say, I don't have time. It's not your priority. How many times a day, how many hours a day are you watching TV mm -hmm. or yeah. talking to your friends or whatever? Everybody has three to seven minutes a day for their spouse. And mm -hmm. what you're talking about is that us time. Right. Catching up on the day, not talking mm -hmm. about problems with kids or finances, but talking about us, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just relating mm -hmm. to each other. You're working with all different kinds of couples, right? Mm -hmm. And so what can you tell me may be a common denominator between some of these couples? Maybe contributing to some of the problems that we see. I'd say uh, what one thing is what you mentioned earlier, um, they haven't come from backgrounds. Um, where there's been a happy marriage. I think that pretty much is a common denominator mm -hmm. so far in most of the couples we've seen is they come from um, split homes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's been not a real secure, or just to have a good um, marriage relationship modeled. They haven't had that. Mm -hmm. I think, like I mentioned earlier, Shara, it's also the time that they spend with each other. Um, mm -hmm. when, when Sue and I were raising our family, I worked all the time and Sue stayed home with the kids. We made that decision. Today you have working moms and dads, you have w different shifts that people work and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so just as a matter of trying to connect with one another for a period of time during the day seems to be problematic. Mm -hmm. So that's, those are the two things I think that probably go through every couple we're, we're working with now. You know, one of the things at Great Marriages is we never have enough mentors, right? No matter how many I get, I can double the number from the year before. We never have enough because we always have a waiting list of couples needing help. So what would you say to couples who, you know, have been married over 20 years because that's one of our requirements is that you have to have been through most of the seven stages of marriage before you can consider mentoring someone else. They've been married 20 years or more and they're like, I can't be a mentor because we don't have a perfect marriage. Did you two think that you would be the perfect mentors and that you had a perfect marriage? What could you say to those couples who may be tossing around that idea? I think um, a perfect marriage would be intimidating. 
I really think uh, the more you can bring into this an experience from your marriage, the, the more you have to offer these people. And um, it, it's just such a good way to spend that little extra time. And Tom and I have found that it even, it's brought us closer together doing it. Yeah. Um, I would say that anyone who has some fear or concern, we re rely very heavily upon the fact that we're not counselors. All we're doing is uh, mentoring and, and really two things, sharing our experiences, mm -hmm. what we've gone through and how we got through those situations. And secondly, the fact that we're just teaching couples skills and helping them practice those skills so that they become better at it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think anyone who, who has a good marriage and has over 20 years and those kinds of things can be a wonderful mentor. Mm -hmm. The important thing is you really draw close to these couples. You really, you know, the couples we work with are like our kids. Mm -hmm. And so you want to see them succeed and you want to see them work things right. out. And so that's, I think that's the challenge of it. One one of our girls said, um, "I just want to be able to to talk about a problem without a yelling match, or to be able to talk through something, and in the end be happy about it." And the first thing that came to my mind was the conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. We can do that. <laughs> you can teach them. We that. can teach them that, and it's been fun to watch couples go through that with sometimes very volatile issues. And when they actually could sit down and do the brainstorming and uh, come, find that they could come to an agreement together and both be happy and not have had to shout or um, get upset, it's been really fulfilling. We find that with so many couples, they have the same arguments over yes. and over, never <laughs> resolving them, mm -hmm. or they've had them so many times, they stop talking about it, mm -hmm. they just give up. So like you said, we can teach them those yes. skills and how to help resolve conflict in a healthy means. What have you learned the most? What has been the one thing you've taken away from your mentoring experience, your training and your working with couples? What is the one thing that you really have learned? From my perspective, it's the importance of listening effective listening. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's so easy to tune out because when your spouse within the first five words mm -hmm. talks about whatever it might be, immediately you just tune out because it's the same old, same old. And as we teach couples how to listen effectively, uh, it's kind of fun to watch the light bulb go on and say, ah, so that's what it means to communicate. So that's been kind of fun for, for me. Mm -hmm. I would say the same, same thing. It would be the communication, just becoming a better communicator. And so often when we think of communication, we do think of talking and making ourselves understood, and we don't think of the part where you need to listen and uh, not being, not waiting, thinking about what you want to say next while the other person is talking, but actually listening so that you can repeat back what you heard. That is the, I mean, the effective communication, right, is mm -hmm. active listening. And, yes. and that is the, the hardest, probably, skill that we teach, not interrupting when other people yes. are talking and listening to what is being said instead of what your interpretation of being <laughs> said is, right? I had one couple, and, and they, they had this argument ongoing, and they were practicing this skill, and uh, he said, he was supposed to be telling a want, need, or desire, and he said, I wish that you would help me with my finance. Uh, help me with the finances. And she said, oh, so you want me to get a job? Is that it? We already had this fight. <laughs> I said, hold on once. Is, is that what he said? And I said, can you repeat back the exact words he said? And she couldn't because she didn't hear the words he said. She uh -huh. just heard mm -hmm. what she thought he was saying because she already she had a preconceived notion, right? So I said, where was the fault in that communication, the breakdown in that communication? Well, perhaps he wasn't clear, right? So I said, restate it. So he did. I want you to help me with the finances. And she said, well, what, what does that mean? I said, exactly. What does that mean? So sometimes when we communicate, mm -hmm. we're too vague. We're too general. We're not yep. specific mm -hmm. enough. He said, I want you to sit down and go through the checkbook with me, see what expenses and um, income we have and where we need to cut so that we can balance the checkbook. She said, why didn't you say so? I can do that. <laughs> 
I mean, sometimes it's just yeah. that simple. They've been mm -hmm. fight, having the same fight forever and never really got down to what it meant. And then when they did, it was like, oh, that's actually, I can do that. It's not that hard. Have you found a situation like that where there was just such a huge miscommunication or non-understanding of a, what the other person was wanting that was, just seemed simple to us, but they were fighting over it? A lot of times couples will use language or words that the two of them understand, but Sue and I don't. Mm -hmm. And occasionally I'll ask, well, now what does that mean? What do you mean by that word? Uh, and then go on to talk about the fact that communication, effective communication, is understanding completely what the other person is either saying, asking for, needing, or what have you, mm -hmm. and how they feel about that. So just, you know, I think too often and too many times we make assumptions that, well, those two, could, because it's words that they are familiar with, they understand them. And so we've run into some of those situations where we just have to ask questions so we understand. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. Have you run into, well, if they loved me, they would know? <laughs> you know, we, we get that a lot, right? And, and no, we don't know because we can't read each other's minds. No matter how, I've been married 30 years and you still, you've been married 44. Yeah. Can you read each other's mind all the yeah. time? <laughs> No, no. One of the great resources, well, you know, Great Marriages has a lot of resources available, but we've gone through a couple of the DVD series, and that has just been eye-opening to us, you know, in terms of things that are unique to men and things that are unique to women about communication and so forth. And I found that's extremely helpful, and we've recommended those to our couples because it puts a different perspective when you're talking, you know, one of the things that, that we've talked about back and forth, you know, men have a nothing box. You know, and she looked at me and she said, well, is that true? And I said, absolutely, it's true, you know. And so we've had some fun with that as well. You'll but have to describe the nothing box to the audience because they might be going, what is he talking about, men have a nothing box? Uh, one of the speakers talks about the man's brain, and in the man's brain there are a whole bunch of boxes, mm -hmm. and he has a nothing box. And a nothing box is exactly what it means. He can sit and think about nothing. You know, and every guy I talk to says, yep, that's right, I can connect with that. And Sue looked at me and she said, is that true? And he talks about the women's box, or women's brain, and it's always connected. Everything and so is forth. connected. We can't think of nothing, so no. we can't understand that they no. can. I can't. It so can't how many women them. are going, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? And he's like, nothing. And they're like, come on, you just don't want to tell me. <laughs> but they really are thinking of. Exactly. Mark, you're referencing Mark Gunger, and he's talking about when a man can sit there with a the remote and click, click, click. Yep. And, and she says, how can you be watching anything? And he says, I'm not. <laughs> you know, it's just clicking, right? And, and we don't get it. Or fishing. How can you sit for hours yeah. and just fish? Well, us women would be talking, talking, talking and driving the men crazy. So yep. that's what you're So that's been one of the learning things that, you know, as we've gone through some of the extra material, and it's, it's been fun to do those things. Because mm -hmm. we've learned a little bit more about each other as well. Mm -hmm. I always know now that if I ask her, what are you thinking about, I'll get an answer. <laughs> and she knows if she asks me, what are you, am I thinking about, and I say nothing, well, that's okay. That's okay. And, you know, some of the things that we talk about, the differences that couples have when they're arguing and fighting, are not unique to them. Some of the things are just basic men-women differences. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you're married to him, her, whatever. You're going to have some of the same issues. So if we get divorced from this one and we get into the next marriage, we're likely to have some very similar mm -hmm. problems. And we're going to go through the same stages of marriage. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we go through the seven stages quicker. And the negative ones may last longer. So the likeliness of divorce for a second marriage actually increases. Mm. People say, well, with a second marriage, I'll be smarter, I'll make better choices. But what we actually find out is that instead of it decreasing, the divorce rate mm -hmm. increases. So how can we make whatever marriage these couples are in last? You know, we didn't really talk about your mentoring, uh, perhaps a engaged couple. Why is that important to have a mentor for an engaged couple? I think expectations. I think um, instead of just, you know, thinking this Prince, Prince Charming is coming and we're going to live happily ever after, but her happily ever after and his happily ever after are going to be way different. Mm -hmm. And if those aren't discussed ahead of time, um, that's, those are the ones we end up seeing because they're not living happily ever after and, and they want to. So it's um, knowing ahead of time 
what, what you're expecting and that your mate knows what you're expecting, mm -hmm. I think is a big, a big part right there. You know, what you're talking about are those unrealistic expectations yeah. that can't be met. So we yeah. get disappointed with these expectations that were met, but really right. they're unrealistic and they, for instance, they come in, I'm not in love anymore. Yes. Well, that's about right. Sometimes <laughs> you're not going to be in love. Nobody ever said you'd be in love every day, except on TV, which they're watching this on TV, right? The soulmate. I find mm -hmm. my perfect soulmate, I'll be happy forever. Right. That's Hollywood, that's not real life. We mm -hmm. find a person, we fall in love, and then we figure out how to make it work. And sometimes that's it's right. hard, and how do we make it work? So the mentoring that you guys are doing for um, these engaged couples may be presenting that picture that you've been married 44 years, and it's not all been wonderful in love periods. Well, uh, we dated for four years before we were married mm -hmm. and thought we knew everything about each other. And there were still things that we needed to learn and uh, work through in terms of simple things like holidays. Where are we going to go? Who are we going to spend it with? Finances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, those kinds of things that we really hadn't spent any time talking mm -hmm. about before we got married. And uh, as we look at the, the curriculum for great marriages uh, and prepare and... and uh, uh, that's the second one. Anyway, uh, it's set up in a way where you get into the various areas of a couple's life. Mm -hmm. And so when you're talking through those kinds of things with premarital counseling, it's saying, hey, you know, have you thought about this? And have you thought about where you're going to live or how you're going to celebrate holidays? And whose family are you going to go to and those kinds of things? And it forces them to take a look deeper into their relationship than just we're in love, you know, and that'll take care of everything else. Who would you say that marriage mentoring could benefit? Anyone. Why? Anyone. You? And why? Well, just, uh, I mean, I, and I think if they, if they would come when they're just, things might be getting a little rocky or just, uh, they, things could be solved so much quickly. Mm -hmm. um, we had one couple that, if they had come four years earlier, it would have been, so easy just to go through the communication and there were some um, stepchildren uh, discipline problems. If those had been dealt with right away, uh, it would have just made all the difference in the world. Instead of waiting until you've seen every counselor you can think of and then this is a last ditch effort and it's a lot more work. It still can be, we can help, but it's a lot more work at that point and you've had a lot more years of unhappiness. It's true. Many people do wait till, you know, right. somebody's threatening to walk out the door. They're mm -hmm. considering separation, mm -hmm. divorce before they come. Right. The enrichment portion is good. Everybody can use enrichment. Everyone can use that. Like I said, we've grown just doing this together. We've really grown. Well, that is great. And I just thank you so much for being with us today. I think that you're a good example to others at mentoring. Anybody can do it if they mm -hmm. you know, put their heart to it and want mm -hmm. to help others. So I thank you for being with us today, Tom and Sue. And that's our show for today. I thank you for joining us on Healthy Marriages, and I would encourage you to go to our website to learn more information about upcoming programs and ways that we can help your marriage or you can enrich your own marriage or the family members around you. Thanks for joining us today. Remember, marriage, it does matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.